All right, how you guys doing? It's Dr. Jeff, Rhythmia Life Advancement Center, Chief Medical Officer here at Rhythmia. Today I want to talk about something that is super important, you know, that like a lot of the guests that we have deal with, which are mental health issues. Now, there's a whole range of mental health issues. The ones we deal with at Rhythmia are not uh, acute, meaning they're not severe as far as uh, diagnostic criteria. So meaning if somebody is uh, psychotic or has schizophrenia or uh, certain disorders that are really extreme, those aren't things that we are able to work with, unfortunately, here at Rhythmia. But what we do deal with is a lot of anxiety, people that have that um, history, also depression and drug and alcohol history. Um, they're not currently using, but they have that in the past. And the reason why I believe that there's a mental health crisis going on especially in the United States, also Canada, other parts of the world, is because there aren't systems that are tailored effectively to help people get better and get what they need from healthcare. For example, like if I have a broken arm, there's a pretty good system on how to get that arm fixed. But if I have depression, there really isn't a good system on how to resolve my depression. And there's two types of scenarios that go on for anxiety and depression, and other mental health issues. There's often a neurochemical side. And for example, if I have low dopamine, just genetically or through drug and alcohol abuse or through lifestyle choices like bad eating and sedentary lifestyle, you know, if, I, if my dopamine's low, then I tend to have depression or at least dysphoria, which is low grade depression, kind of like the blues. So there's neurochemical components to, for example, depression and anxiety also. Usually there's a serotonin imbalance with anxiety and that can be related to a lot of things, also just genetics and also lifestyle choices and drug and alcohol issues as well. Then there's the behavioral side. So we have two kind of sides, right? Neurochemical side, behavioral side. So if I feel um, like I don't have any choices in my life, if I feel that you know I'm not in the relationship I want or I'm in no relationship, if I hate my job, if I'm making choices that aren't really that great, or maybe I have a history of trauma or abuse, and that can obviously damper my mood, and that can make me feel depressed, or it can make me have anxiety or both. So the question is, how do you address somebody that has you know, this sort of situation going on, where they might have a neurochemical issue, and they also might have a lifestyle issue or a behavioral issue? So in the Western medical model, what, what tends to be sort of the protocol is you go to therapy, you go to some groups, you get on medication, and you're supposed to kind of work through sort of what these issues are and then get better and eventually, in theory, not need meds, not need therapy, and not need groups and be able to be successful and thrive. But what happens, and I've been in this world of mental health stuff for many, many years, decades, what happens is I don't see a lot of the people getting better. Some people do, but I don't see it as a common theme. I see people kind of staying in a stagnant sort of place. And I don't see people really thriving and getting past their depression and their anxiety in the, in the traditional model. And the reason for that is because oftentimes the meds do not work. And if they do, they work for a short amount of time. Now, especially the meds that are related to anxiety. Now, those meds are, are rough because... A lot of those meds are what's called benzodiazepines. And that's a class of medication that is supposed to lower anxiety. And those are Xanax and Clonopin and Valium and those kind of meds. Those are highly addictive. Those meds wear out their effectiveness very quickly at the dose that you're prescribed. And then you need more, you need more. When I worked at Passages as the administrative director, which was a rehab in Malibu, California, I was more concerned about the people that had benzodiazepine addiction than I was about anybody else. And the reason was twofold. Number one, it was just brutal to come off of with a taper. It was just super hard. Anxiety would climb through the roof. The other is because it's very dangerous because when people stop cold turkey, which means they just cut it off without doing it again, they can die. They can go into a seizure. So there's really only two substances that do that if you're addicted to them and one is alcohol if you have an alcohol addiction the other are the benzodiazepine class of medications and if you have an addiction to those two meds or to that med and that alcohol 
and it's hardcore and you stop cold, you can die. So they're very dangerous and they're very problematic for a lot of people. Now, if you have uh, depression and you're given SSRIs and you've used them and usually they take, you know, 30, 60, 90 days to really start to kind of work, you know, in theory. And then you have all these side effects. There's weight gain. There's often suicidality that comes with them. There's all these different issues. You kind of feel numb to all emotion. Uh, what happens when you try to come off of those is that also your anxiety jumps. And you can even have a deeper, darker depression later. And coming off those meds is really hard. So what happens then, people feel trapped. You know, they feel trapped. Now, the, the protocol for antidepressant medication is somebody that's diagnosed with major depressive disorder is supposed to be on those kind of meds for about 18 months when they're supposed to be learning in therapy and through other things how to kind of work through their depression and they're supposed to come off those meds. Now, we all know that that's not what usually happens. People have been on antidepressant meds for decades. I've seen people have been on meds for 30 years, 20 years all the time, right? And so that part is really challenging for people because, you know, if the problem, right, is that like when I was working in LA and I had a patient that came to me first time and they're either using insurance or their Medi-Cal or, you know, whatever they're using to pay, Part of what I have to do to get them qualified for their insurance payment is I have to give them a diagnosis right away. So a lot of therapists just throw out at their clients, okay, you know, major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, you know, bipolar one, bipolar two, addiction, you know, acute withdrawal symptoms are happening, whatever, whatever. And so you get labeled with something that allows you to bill insurance or their therapist to bill insurance or your medical doctor. And what happens then is that you're in this class of sort of like this category and your therapist is like trying to work with you, you know, maybe your psychiatrist is trying to work with you, but you know, they're, they're just using more meds and more talk therapy and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's, it's working to a certain point. It gets to a certain level where, it, you know, it's probably helpful. Then there's this other part that they never quite get to, in my opinion, and that's the self-realization part. And that's the part where you have to feel that internal change, that internal shift. And the problem is that in order to have that shift, you have to have some feelings. And if you're on a bunch of these meds, it's really hard to have feelings that are based in reality and really what you're going through as a person. So it's really, that's a struggle. Now, if I don't follow the protocol, right, when I was back in LA, if I didn't follow this med protocol with the psychiatrist I was working with, or if I didn't follow like, the therapeutic protocol, if I didn't refer into the psych hospital, if they, if they escalated, that was liable. So the, the way that, that the whole system is set up is, is, is problematic, sucks, actually. And the therapists and the, the doctors involved, you know, a lot of those people are good people trying to do the right thing, but they, they have a certain way they have to do things. It would be awesome if they could be creative and just be like, you know what, you should probably go do some yoga or you should probably go meditate or you should go get some exercise or you should go do some plant medicine or you should go and do all these other sort of kind of self-realization activities. It'd be great if they, you know, sometimes, you know, obviously they could recommend yoga and meditation, but can't recommend plant medicine. It's not legal in the U S or Canada or it's parts of Canada. It is actually now, thank God. Um, you can't really recommend these alternative things. You have to follow the medical protocol, which is the licensing board of whatever the person's in, whether it's board of psychology or the American medical association, they have to follow like the, the rules of that system. And who sets those rules, right? That's a good question. Who determines the protocols for people on depression and people that have anxiety? Guess who? You guys know. The pharmaceutical industry. They determine the protocols. They lobby the AMA. They lobby the FDA. They lobby the Board of Psychology. They lobby all the different groups that dictate the, the, the protocols for all the patients that have these disorders. Meds are involved. Talk therapy is involved. It's all these things involved. And if you don't follow that, then you're screwed as a psychologist or as a medical doctor. And so that's why a lot of therapists, their hands are tied and they're trying to do the right thing, but they just, you know, they're just in this system where they have to do what they're supposed to do. And, you know, what I would, uh, I would go in and out of the locked psych unit working with people in there that I would see people in my private practice that I was working under a psychologist that was when I was a student and I would see all this like in and out of stuff, like all the time, just always going to be group homes. They'd see, they go to IOPs, which is intensive outpatient programs. You know, they'd be at their group home and they'd go there in the day. They'd see their psychiatrist once every three months, get a bunch of meds. 
Then they go to the psych hospital because they got suicidal. Then he's supposed to see me once a week and they rarely showed up because they're all unstable. You know, and they're just like this ongoing thing. Not to mention the fact that therapy is expensive. And if you're, if you're on insurance, then the therapist has to do what the insurance company is like asking them to do. And that's not always in your best interest. So it's really a, a broken system. I don't like to say that it's the broken people that are the clinicians because there's a lot of good people there. I know a lot of them. Obviously, I worked with them for years. I know them. They're good. You know, they're good people trying to do the right thing. But the problem is, is that the system they're in sucks. And the system is like what's not allowing them to really use their healing skills and to use their therapeutic skills. There's exceptions. There's always exceptions. I'm talking, there's outliers. There's things that sometimes it can be awesome. It can work great, whatever. But I'm talking about the bulk of people. So many people are overprescribed meds and there's, there's so many people are given these labels, you know, like I ask people like when I, when I do an intake here, I say, okay, do you have any psychological diagnoses that you would get somewhere from a, a psychologist or a medical doctor in the States or wherever you're from? And they say, yeah, I've been given, you know, a bunch of diagnoses and I've been on a bunch of meds in the past. I'm like, okay, well, how, how accurate do you think those things are? Like, ah, oh, not really. Cause when I came off my meds, I felt great. And, I, and I've never really had these moments of like this acute, you know, anxiety. I maybe had a panic attack a couple times in my life, but I don't feel like that's an accurate diagnosis. I just feel like I'm struggling in life right now with a few issues and I have a history of some trauma and I'm kind of confused about my life right now. Okay, cool. Well, that, that's, that's life, right? So like we all have stuff like that. There's always times like that. I don't think that warrants necessarily a diagnosis that labels you and puts you on meds it makes you feel trapped and you kind of like nothing you can do. There's so many people I work with, so many people that are on a laundry list of meds and they've been on them for so long and they just don't even know who they are anymore as people because their emotions have been blunted and they don't even know how to like engage with not only the world, but themselves. And they come and they, they come to rhythm and they taper off these meds for a certain amount of time and they come here and they're really excited, you know, and then they actually do the program. They realize that they're like, they can heal themselves. They can plug into themselves. They can get what they need. You know, it's very, very empowering to know that you're the person that can heal yourself. You don't need some specialist. You know, the specialist can, can help point you in the right direction, but you don't need to rely on anybody. And the reason you guys watch these videos that I do, I'm sure, is because you guys don't rely on people. And maybe you have in the past, but you're like kind of over it. And you want to rely on yourself. And so I'm totally all for that. You know, the easiest job I've had in healthcare is being here at Rhythmia because I don't have to do much. You know, I talk to the guests and I supervise the staff, but I let the program do what it does. I let the plant medicine do what it does for the guests because the guests are the one that are healing themselves. They're the ones really making this shift and this change. It's like it's super cool to see. And it's so funny because people think, oh, yeah, you guys are so weird. Like Rhythmia is so out there. It's like, really? Not really? Like, I don't think so. Like rhythm is actually really basic. It's actually really, really simple. It's like, we believe that all disease and health conditions and mental health issues and addiction and all of these things are a result of you being unplugged from your true self and that you're dissociated and that there's all this other stuff going on around you that's chaotic. And the minute you can plug back into yourself and resolve all this historical emotional baggage and all this historical traumatic stuff, the minute you're plugged in, you get that stuff off of you and you process it and it's gone, you're whole, you're healed, you're complete and you're with yourself. And it's a really amazing thing to watch. And it's true because if you think about it, like there's been times in your life, right, when you've been totally plugged into who you are and how do you feel? You're happy, you feel you have energy, you're not all upset about stuff. You have clarity. You can make the right decisions. There's all these struggles in life that come at us. That's part of life. Right? That's how we learn. And what happens is you go through this stuff and you realize like, you know what? I'm strong. I'm a confident person. I can make these decisions and I can be empowered. But what the system wants to tell you is that you don't really know what to do because you're lost and you're not the expert and you're stupid and you don't have the knowledge. You got to rely on us and you're, you know, you got to follow what we say. And I think that's just crap. I don't believe in that for one second. Now, if somebody is overwhelmed and they do need some support and they've been beat down their whole life, sure. Then there's a person, you know, in their life that can help them, whether it's a therapist or a friend or somebody from their religious group or whatever. And that's cool. But at the end of the day, it's you. You're the one that has to make the shift. Meds aren't going to do it. Therapy's not going to do it. Doctors aren't going to do it. Nobody's going to do it but yourself. 
those people can help kind of nudge you towards the right place to be. But then it, when it comes right down to it, you can't avoid this fact. You got to do the work. So a mental health crisis is what's happening in the world because everybody's frustrated. There's all these people out there trying to make a buck. There's all these people trying to control other people. There's all this turmoil and chaos, right? And the reason is because of greed and power. And there's all these people that want to just like have these ridiculous amounts of money for God knows what reason. Because how many cars do you need, right? It's just stupid stuff. It's just absurd. None of that creates happiness. None of it. And when I worked with Jerry at the very beginning, you know, Jerry had everything in the world you could ever want. I mean, we, know pe- we all know people like that. Cars and houses and all this stuff. And he'd go out to dinner or wherever and do whatever, you know. And he was a miserable person because he wasn't plugged into himself. He didn't know who he was. He didn't know why he felt this way. No amount of money in the world made a difference. Now, of course, money's important. We've got to pay our bills. But it's not, it's not what makes us who we are, right? Who we are is authentically who we are plugged into ourselves. You know what? Who we are is how we treat people and how we treat ourselves. That's who we really are as people, not what we have. It's nice to have nice things. I like a nice pair of flip-flops. <laughs> I wear Olukais, right, because they're super comfortable from Hawaii. I love those flip-flops. They're expensive. They're $65. I like those, right? I like, I like stuff like that, but it doesn't define who I am. I can wear locals that are 99 cents from Long's Drug Store in, in Waianae and, and be just as happy because it doesn't matter, like, what we got as stuff. It matters who we are as people and what we're doing with ourselves and our own clarity. Rhythmia is all about that. We want to plug you into yourself. Today, uh, this week, we have a medical doctor here as a guest. We always have a couple a week. We have some psychologists that are here also. We have a lot of nurses that come here, and I love seeing people in healthcare come here as guests because they're the ones that are seeing thousands of people all the time, and they're treating them and working with them, and they're seeing what I saw, which was, a revolving door of in and out of inpatient and therapy and meds and all this crazy nonsense, you know, and we all know healthcare is a business. And you know, if we look at it like that, then we can use it to our advantage when we need it. But if we're looking at uh, a corporate structure of healthcare for mental health to resolve our depression and help us feel better, we're probably barking up the wrong tree. You got to look at yourself. You have to heal yourself. And that's what we're doing at Rhythmia. I hope you guys can come down here and check this out. You guys will love it. You know, we have a lot of amazing staff here who are very skilled and they're very loving, create a safe environment. So let's end the mental health crisis. Let's get people off meds and off opiates in particular. That's ridiculous. We all know <laughs> that's another topic, it's opiates. That's, a, that's one I can talk a lot about working at passages and dealing with tons of people on opiates. You know, it's sad. And there's a reason why people do those meds, right? There's a big reason. I'll talk about that maybe in a couple of weeks, but Look, look to yourself for change. The mental health crisis can end starting with you. Pura vida. See you guys down here soon. Thanks for watching. See you next week.